Hey, what's up guys? It's Corey from Cruise Reviews. I am coming to you today with another brewery review. I am in Birmingham, Alabama, and I am at Ghost Train Brewing Company. So Ghost Train is right outside of downtown, and it is kind of one of the new kids on the block. So I'm excited to share this with you. Let's go. So before we get started, uh, I just want to say if you find yourself enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like button below. And if you really find yourself enjoying the video, consider subscribing to the channel. That would mean a ton to me. So back to the video. Okay, so if you are new to the channel and you've never watched one of my brewery series before, um, let me just tell you how we're going to go through the brewery, how I rate it. So in a nutshell, we rate things uh, based on four criteria. We rate things based on one, and most importantly, the taste of the beer. Number two is the variety, uh, meaning like all the different types of beer that a brewery might have. Number three is what I call the churn. That Think of that as variety over time. So if you were to visit a brewery once a month for an entire year, uh, how does the variety change over time? Is it the same beer every time you go back or are they on constant rotation? And then number four, also very important, is the location and the atmosphere of the brewery. Because honestly, if the location and the atmosphere stink, why not just go to the grocery store, buy it, and take it somewhere else? So that's what we're going to cover today uh, here at Ghost Train. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the review. So uh, just a quick note, I left my tripod at home. So if we're a little more shaky than usual, it's because I'm having to just hold my phone, uh, which stinks. But uh, anyway, it just is what it is today. So uh, first one up is a sour beer. That's what we're gonna start with first. It is like a blueberry lemon sour. It's called CTC is what they wrote on the flight. So let's give it a go. It's interesting. Uh, it's just okay. Like it's not the strongest sour I've ever had. The lemon comes through a lot more strongly than the blueberry, but it's not bad. It's just not as uh, blueberry up front as I would like it to be, but the sour is definitely there on the back end. Not salty at all, but the smell is delicious. Like it smells, honestly, it smells better than it tastes. So our next beer up is the Little Vic Pale Ale. This is like a traditional American pale ale, which means it should be kind of hoppy. It's not gonna be hazy, but it's not as hoppy typically as like an IPA. Oh, that's really nice. Like that's exactly what a pale ale should be. It's pretty hoppy, but it's not over the top hoppy. It is piney, it's resiny. Oh, I, I like that. Like a lot of times now, like the pale ale has gone the way of the dodo. It doesn't exist hardly anymore. Most people just have like a session IPA, which is kind of like a pale ale, but honestly it tastes like a watered down pale ale. So 
Um, I much prefer this, it's, it's quite good. So I'm a big fan of this pale ale. And next up, we've got the big Allurium IPA. This is like a 10% IPA, uh, so it should be pretty, uh, pretty big, pretty bold. Let's give it a go. Yeah, way more hops, right? The bitterness is, is a good bit higher than on the Pale L. Actually, the Pale L smells better than this does. The taste of this is just completely different than the Pale L. So you could easily have both and really enjoy uh, both separately. Um, I actually think I'm gonna give the nudge to the Pale L. I think it's a, actually a better tasting beer overall, but still not too bad. Again, the Allurium IPA. Yeah, not bad. So, by the way, uh, I, if you're wondering where the heck are you sitting, how is this a brewery, I'm actually in an old storage container outside. So the brewery's out over my shoulder there. But this is like an old refurbished storage container that they have redone to make seating. It's pretty cool. One thing I will mention is that it's like 70 degrees outside and the storage container is pretty warm. So if you were here in like the middle of the summer, maybe for like the World Games, uh, probably would skip the storage container and sit inside where it's not quite so hot. Okay, so my fourth and final beer at this location is a nice stout. I think they call it like the standard stout. So pretty, pretty standard name for the standard stout. Let's give it a go. Mm. Yeah, the scent is like the classic, like roasted scent that you would get with a stout. Yeah, that's pretty good. Like it's it's um, it's pr a little drier than I was anticipating. So it's like a nice stout, but it's it's almost like a dry stout. Uh, and if you are not familiar, a dry stout's like Guinness. Uh, the mouthfeel is just different. It's not as robust uh, mouthfeel. So you get a lot of the scent, you get a little bit of the bitterness, but it doesn't just like explode uh, with flavor. And a lot of people prefer that. So it goes down a little easier. It's a slightly lower carbonation. Uh, so it's, it's quite yummy. So not bad at all. And actually, just a quick word about that stout I was just telling you about. It's actually not a stout. I just went back and reread. <laughs> It's called the standard porter, so we don't have the alliteration, but the notes are still the exact same. Uh, so a stout and a porter, very similar style. Most people, myself included, would be hard pressed to tell you the difference between the two. So it's called the standard porter, not the standard stout. Okay, so now that we have started like trying the beer, let's go ahead and start with our categories. And I always leave taste to the end, so let's start with variety. I'm gonna give the variety here, mm, actually today's a really good day to be here because they have a great variety. I would say just overall, I'm gonna give the variety like a three out of five. And it's not actually because the variety is low. Um, like they have a light beer, they have a number of sours here today, they've got a, a pale ale, they've got an IPA, and they've got a porter. Uh, so the variety is actually quite good but the number of beers is a little bit lower here. So you're not gonna get like 20 beers or something like that. The variety's good, but you're only gonna have maybe one of each style. That's not a bad thing, but I am gonna count a couple points off for that just because it's a smaller brewery. Uh, so you're not gonna get quite the like wide variety in terms of like, you're not gonna get four IPA choices like you would at like a Monday night brewing, but that's not a bad thing. So the variety is great in terms of like, it's gonna make everybody happy when you come here, uh, but you're just not gonna have a ton of stuff. So if you only like IPAs, you might come here for one and then go to the next place. Uh, but if you're here with a group of people for like a happy hour, then it's awesome because almost anybody's gonna be able to find something they enjoy. Now let's talk about churn. Conversely, even though the, uh, because they don't have as much variety, right? They don't have as many beers, their churn is like off the charts, right? They have a lot of beers that they, they're not their flagship beers that you would see in the store on tap. So I'm gonna give the churn like a four and a half out of five, just because every time I come here, they've got new stuff and a large portion of their menu is new. They only have usually one or two flagship beers out of their 10 beers on tap. 
Uh, so the churn rating, four and a half out of five, very, very good. And it kind of goes the opposite way of variety, right? If you've got a ton of beers on tap all the time, variety is really high, but churn is typically a lot lower. If you only have 10 beers on tap, then you know variety might be a little lower, but churn is gonna be traditionally quite high. So let's talk about atmosphere and location. The location is super convenient. They've got their own parking lot, which is really convenient, um, which I love. Um, the atmosphere here is definitely kind of more eclectic, which I love too. Uh, it feels a little bit industrial, but not like just this like straight up like uh, prototypical industrial flair. Uh, it feels kind of like thrown together, but in a cool way. Uh, so I love the vibe. I love the location. I'm going to give the vibe uh, and location like a four and a half out of five. They even have a stage for live music, which you'll see in a second. They have tons of varieties of seating plenty of outdoor space. The only thing that I can count off for is they don't have a ton of space. If you have like a dog or something, you're kind of pretty close together. So if it's a busy day, I might not bring my dog here just because you're gonna be really close to other people and that might not be perfect. Uh, but that's a small thing, right? And a small portion of the population is gonna bring their dog to the brewery. But if that's a consideration, just remember, if it's a really busy like Saturday afternoon, this might not be the best place to bring your dog uh, if, it's, if it's a busy day. I also wanna give a shout out just really quick to the fact that they have a food truck here on most days, almost every day. They also have liquor here. So you can go in and get a mudslide or some mixed drink. I think they actually brew their own or distill their own uh, vodka and gin, I think. I'll confirm that. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, so it's not just for beer lovers here. They're gonna have a number of other things. They even have a cider on tap that they make, uh, which is quite unique to the Birmingham area. So again, it just lends itself to that variety aspect where they don't have a ton of variety of beer in terms of like numbers of beers. They do have a lot of other options. So if you're uh, looking for a place for non-beer drinkers, this is a great place to come because they're gonna find something they can enjoy as well. Okay, so it's time once again to talk about taste. All right, taste is the most subjective rating because your taste might be different than my taste. My taste, just for reference, is big and bold. Like I want really interesting, really funky, really big, bold flavors. If it's subtle, it's probably not for me. I'm just gonna find that it's okay. I usually think uh, it's not very inspired, right? You could be completely different. So with that being said, let me just give this rating uh, with, that, with that knowledge. So I'm gonna say that this beer is like a three and a half out of five. I definitely think there are beers here that are like five out of five. Their Judge Juicy IPA is outstanding. It's one of the best beers in the city. Uh, but top to bottom, for me, I'm gonna say it's just all right. Again, that's not an indictment on their beer. It's just a different style than what I personally go for. Now, if you like slightly more subtle, not huge, bold, funky flavors, you might give this place a five out of five. I know a lot of people in Birmingham that this is one of their very favorite places. And I can't argue with that, right? It's just a different style than what I personally prefer for my palate. So that's it. Uh, again, I highly recommend it. I really recommend that you come check this place out. Uh, if you disagree with me, get in the comments below. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Uh, and you know, we can have a conversation about it. But uh, yeah, as far as the taste goes, I'm gonna give it a solid three and a half out of five stars. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting the like button below. It just lets YouTube know that, hey, other people might like this video too. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would mean the world to me. And of course, with the World Games coming up in Birmingham, if you're watching this, uh, you know, and you've got family or friends coming in, please consider sharing it with them. They might find it interesting as well. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will catch you at the next place.